Hey everybody, it's Drew again. Uh, I'm back to painting, or at least I'm getting back into painting, and uh, I thought I'd uh, show you some, some interesting stuff. Uh, you may remember last time I finally got around to putting a coat of paint on that particular mini. Uh, as you can see, uh, I've actually painted him and based him. Uh, not the greatest paint job I've ever done, but, you know, adequate, more than table ready looks pretty good in the hand, looks good on the table, and he's got himself a nice little base which I've actually attached him to. So uh, I have these little Malifaux bases, and he looks pretty good on it, so I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. But that's not really what I'm here to show you today. I thought I'd show you what I actually use for all my painting tools. Uh, I find that kind of instructive. I found it when other people showed me, so I'll show you what I've been using, not necessarily all the tools, but most of the stuff I use. So you can see most of them right here and I've lined them up for you and I figured I'd just you know go through them real quick just to show you what I use when I paint um, obviously first up we have painting palettes uh, you can never have too many of these, these come, my wife got me for these at Michael's for 99 cents if a lot less than that uh, you know they make them for all sorts of stuff, kids stuff, since the paints are water soluble these can clean out I just haven't gotten around to it and if they get too messy, you can just throw them away, because that's what they're good for. Uh, speaking of paints, uh, this is a paint case I picked up, which I love. Uh, it, uh, I switch it upside down once in a while just to keep the paints in rotation. If we pop it open here, you'll see that uh, not only is it excellent for storing these Flames of War paint, or similar Vallejo paints, which uh, you'll notice are all... Um, uh, you know, acrylics. So, the nice thing about these is they wash clean in a little bit of water when I'm doing the actual painting so they can get them up so my wife doesn't kill me for making mix on the table if I don't put down enough newspaper or paper towels, which of course I try never to do because, you know, keep it clean. Of course, I have a host of different brushes. I've got small ones, dry brushes, big ones, detail brushes, fine detail brushes. My vision isn't good enough for these brushes. Um, and mostly what I've got here are Flames of War colors, and then I supplemented them with just a handful of uh, Vallejo colors, just so I could have, you know, some more natural stuff, some metal, some brighter colors. Uh, you know, you're not going to find a bright purple color uh, in the Flames of War set, and if I want to do non-Flames of War minis, I do that. The nice thing for this, of course, is if you flip it over, check this out, uh, you can actually see the colors that are in the case, which is kind of nice, and if you're anal, you can organize them that way. I did at one point, and then reality set in as I used it. Uh, this is my actual toolbox, and uh, this is where I store a lot of the smaller tools that I use on a regular basis. Everybody's favorite, Zappagap, for putting those minis together. Uh, spare bases for Flames of War, decals, uh, good old craft tacky glue for doing basing. Uh, uh, leftover units, I don't know how they got here. Uh, these are guys are from my my Panzer Battalion. I think he got abandoned because he was painted oh so poorly. This may be one of the first ones I ever painted. And I'm really embarrassed by them, but there it is. Lots of little extra uh, fiddly bits to go on other minis, like these things from a couple of Panzers. Uh, one of the most important tools in any miniature designers aren't the arsenal, the toothpick. Uh, I use these for all sorts of things, for mixing paint, for attaching minis to, for uh, cleaning stuff, all sorts of things. Uh, this uh, truly foul, foul smelling stuff is Zip Kicker. Uh, Zappa Gap is really fast, but it ain't fast enough sometimes, and Zip Kicker uh, accelerates the drying of the glue, which means that it dries in about 10 to 15 seconds instead of 60 seconds. May not sound like much, but when you are doing hundreds, literally a couple of hundred of these dudes, you want them to dry as fast as possible. Uh, simple tools like the old tweezers, um, the classic X-Acto knife, uh, which is helpful when cleaning out the uh, the miniatures from the extra stuff. Uh, a, a more sophisticated kind of tweezer and some files for cleaning the minis when they're metal. 
Uh, small bases, snippers, again, for cleaning minis, particularly the plastic minis, and that good generic all-around tool, the spoon, for adding water to the paints when I mix them, and other things. And all this stuff clips up to make it nice and tidy and clean, which makes everybody happy. This is a more recent acquisition. Um, this is a little mini stand that I can prop a mini up on, especially when I want to do detail work and put it under the uh, the magnifying glass. Woo, high tech. In practical purposes, mm, not as practical as you'd hope. Uh, this is for doing more detailed mini work. Uh, and my wife, who does a lot of quilting, provided me with this, which is, oh well, she didn't provide it, she let me borrow. Uh, this incredibly powerful thing is a uh, an ot light, which uh, a lot of craft people use for working on fabric and stuff. What it's really nice for is picking out the detail on a mini. See here how it looks without one here and one down in the basement. Obviously, uh, allows me to adjust lighting so it's going to figure out painting schemes, uh, and more importantly, allows me to really see the detail on a mini. Very helpful for that. Um, this little sucker over here is just your usual egg carton styrofoam storage material but turned upside down it makes fantastic work for putting minis on top of for priming outside uh, it makes a nice surface floor or if I want to uh, mass prime I can stick little toothpicks or such in them with the little soldiers on them and spray a whole bunch at one time and it's perfectly reusable and the stuff doesn't really take the paint so you know you can see a little bit but you know if it gets messed up who cares um, Next up, uh, and finally, are uh, stuff I use. These are uh, Army Painters Quick Shades. Uh, they come in three versions, and I have all three, which is uh, the Soft Tone, Strong Tone, and Dark Tone, as you can see here. The difference really is just in the, the depth of the shade. What these lovely little things do is they're uh, a pre-mixed wash and finisher that when you, uh, usually you dip the miniature inside, you put it on something, you dip it inside. You can also paint it on, but it'll destroy the brush eventually. Although I might actually buy a brush just for that purpose. It smells god-awful. Not as bad as the zip kicker, but it's, it's, it's very chemical. So, uh, I usually do it, you have to, and then you have to shake it off, take the mini and shake it off onto some surface, so it's a very messy process. But when it's done, it does an incredible amount of wash detailing, and then it applies uh, you know, basically a, a acrylic coat. The only downside is it's shiny, but uh, with that shiny coat you can uh, then put dull matte primer on it and then it flattens the color and it looks like it's not shiny at all. It's wonderful. Uh, my army was made using this stuff. <clears throat> last, almost last, we have dry deck. So we use this for basing. Uh, when I want to make terrain and I want to put the minis in terrain, I put this stuff on. This particular dry deck is nice because it goes on pink and dries white. So when you put it on, it'll be pink, and you'll know it's dry when it turns completely white. Uh, it's the kind of stuff you use for caulking and uh, doing finishing on houses, but it's perfect for our purposes of making bases. <clears throat> this stuff is the infamous green stuff you may have heard about. It's great for, basically it's an epoxy that you mix the two colors together, more word and work them like dough, and uh, they turn into, guess what, green, blue plus yellow. Uh, you can then mold the stuff. It's incredibly, incredibly sticky but it's moldable almost like a clay and when it dries it becomes hard uh, again like a kind of a clay and can be used for really good effects on terrain pieces, destination pieces uh, objective markers and whatever else you want um, it's great for putting little features on minis so they don't have them the downside of course is that uh, it's so tacky uh, I recommend using gloves, which is the only item here I, I use that I don't have here to keep the fingers clean and not stick to your fingers because it's horrible. The last thing in my arsenal are uh, uh, we've got ballast and underbrush here. These are just woodland scenics material, and then I also have a couple of kinds of ballast from uh, Gale Force 9 and a couple of kind of a summer blend of. Uh, trees from Gale Force 9 for finishing off bases. Um, a combination of the bunch work really well. So uh, that's what I use to make my minis and I just thought you'd find that interesting and I uh, hope you enjoyed that. So see ya.